Bugs meet with an ice cream treat. Refresh yourselves, it's time to eat. So come on, folks, let's join the band as we all head for the refreshment stand. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another 13 Nights, but also Concession Stand, and also the last video on the 13 Nights of Halloween. I'm ending it with an absolute banger with the ultimate guest, the first guest. Actually, I don't know if actually it's between you and D-Free who was the first guest on the channel. <laughs> actually, technically, it's the Mew Mew Fours, but whatever. <laughs> all, all three of you, extremely important. I'm ending it with Zed Rot. Hello, Hello Zed. everybody. We're here for the concession stand. Spooktacular, the mostly only way we're able to do concession stand because of my current... Like the only position. time we do it now, I know. Yeah, but let me tell you, the second... We should start I'm, doing one for Christmas movies, too. We should start. We were going to do it last year, but then um, we decided to do the Frosty thing. Yeah, we and, did Frosty the Snowman thing instead. Yeah, and let me tell you, the Frosty the Snowman thing is amazing, but holy shit did that take my entire December... <laughs> Yeah, oh god, I can only imagine. It's it, really good though. You did a really good job. Yeah. I think I I think I still have like the save file. At some point I was gonna do a um day in the life and have you on there and talk about specifically the process of making Frosty. Maybe we'll do that for November as we prepare to maybe do it again. Okay, anyway, that would be fun as hell. I'm down for that. Yeah. For the spooktacular though, we're gonna be talking about a horror movie and I got to pick it this time and I wanted to pick one that I'm pretty sure Zen had never seen, that I had seen, that I really liked, I liked what it was doing. It is a horror movie called You're Next. Now, this was been my I believe my second or third time watching it. Zen, this was your first time watching it. Before I get into any details of it, how'd you feel about the movie? <laughs> This movie was nuts. It was like it wasn't bad. I liked it, yeah. um, but it really was just like the movie of people getting killed. <laughs> like not everything just started killing everyone. Yeah, it uh, it, it kind of you think it's gonna be like a slow burn, and then the sl it does not. It's not a slow burn at yeah, all. Yeah, it, it, like it starts a little like slow, and they're just chatting, and they're like, "Oh, we're gonna visit your mom and dad. That's great." And then they like you know you slowly introduce all the characters and then someone gets shot in the face and then just the rest of the movie doesn't stop does not stop from that point on and it's kind of amazing so before we get into the details of it i want to give a little backstory about what this movie is so your next was directed by adam wingard do you remember that name uh i have never heard that name before all unless right. he's the inspiration for the Yu-Gi-Oh card little wingard <laughs> Yes, actually. <laughs> no, unfortunately not. Uh, Adam is known for building, for making a lot of like indie horror movies until he hit it big. I want to say actually Your Next is kind of the movie that compelled him forward a little bit. And this was has been his f the four films he did after Your Next. Next was The Guest, 2014. All right, still a horror movie. 2016's Blair Witch, which is a, I think a sequel to the original Blair Witch that does not take account to all the other shitty sequels of Blair Witch only the the one good Is that movie. not a reboot? Was it a reboot? I thought it was Oh no, that. apparently I just I just looked it up. It says also known as Blair Witch 3. Yeah, so because I guess not. Book of Shadow is Blair Witch 2, which everyone who is a fan of Blair Witch ignores. <laughs> 2017's Death Note. Death Note. Yeah, Wait, Death you Note. don't mean the Netflix one? Yeah, the Netflix Death Note. He <laughs> directed that. And then 20, no, 2021's Godzilla vs. Kong. No fucking way. None of those movies, have, maybe the Blair Witch Project, but Godzilla vs. Kong definitely does not have the vibe. That your next has. No, and funny enough, I think some reviewers actually criticize Kong for, like, he's like, you don't see any of his, like, style from, like, his early horror indie days in this movie at all. So it kind of makes you figure, like, why the fuck did they get him to direct it? It doesn't feel yeah, like... Yeah, what a weird choice for that. But would it, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong been way better if, like, Kong was sniping for the entire movie? With a crossbow? Just sniping Godzilla while he's fighting shit? <laughs> yeah, it would be pretty great. So yeah, that is his kind of repertoire there. I just feel like it needed to be shown. Like this guy would eventually go on to make Godzilla vs Kong. He's I don't remember what he's gonna be making next, but that movie did. I pretty can't good. fucking believe that the same guy who made Godzilla vs Kong made the Netflix Death Note. It's crazy, right? What an insane world that we live in. 
I also can't believe the guy who made your next made that Death Note movie because oh my god, we should actually do Death Note <laughs> for one of these because oh my god, Death okay. Note man, yeah. what that movie's a, awful. It's so bad. I have to see it again, and it wasted it's... such a perfect casting. Let's go back to your next. Okay, so let's okay. let me. <laughs> Let me very quickly explain the plot of Your Next. If you have not seen Your Next, I suggest hopping up into Hulu and seeing it there because it's a hell of a movie. Um, so the film kind of opens up with a couple. It's like two. It, I, I like to say it's setting the theme of men disappointing women by having an older <laughs> man having sex with a younger woman. He immediately finishes and she is unsatisfied with their encounter of sex. Yeah, she looks so bored. Like, she could not care less about where she is. Yeah, so she kind of walks around and goes, like, as you do in post like, <laughs> post-nut clarity, as she goes, like, what am I doing with this guy? <laughs> I guess post-no-nut clarity, I should say, because she didn't get anything. <laughs> yeah, she's just disappointed. Disappointed. <laughs> and then it gets even worse for her, because both of her, both, both the dude and the girl are immediately murdered. <laughs> Yeah, like almost instantly. And it I remember it being hilarious to me because she she starts noticing that like something's wrong and the thing that cues her off is a twig snapping outside. Yeah. She's in the house. <laughs> and a stick breaks or something and she's like, "What?" Like that's abnormal to happen. Well, you'd never seen it before. And then she immediately gets killed, and then this is the best part of the setup, because when she gets killed, the killers take the time to put up in her blood, you're next, to set up the kill that's coming afterwards, because the guy goes, I'm, he looks, <laughs> I imagine in his head, he goes, you're next, what the fuck does that mean? Then <laughs> immediately killed. The best part is, he slowly walks up to it, like really slowly, and he he reaches his hand out to touch it, but it's on the outside of the window. <laughs> oh, yeah. So good. But he like yeah. really slowly reaches out to touch the blood that doesn't look like blood at all when it's no, on the it window like that. But then he's immediately got, and this is also he's wearing, the the person who kills him is wearing a lamb mask because there's a I believe the killers are there's three killers with masks and it's a lamb, a wolf, and a oh man I, I don't, don't remember who the other guy is because he get he gets off really yeah. quickly it's a tiger think, it's a tiger, it's a tiger. Mask. there you go there you go tiger mask not to be confused with the wrestler tiger mask <laughs> so that so that kill scene immediately cuts into um the parents of the house that they're going to i forget the parents name i think the parents are there's a lot of characters in this movie and not a lot well, of the, the mother is aubrey because i remember every character in this name has a very like woman writing novels for young adults kind of name <laughs> It's like Aubrey and uh, Crispin and Drake. It's not just like, hey, Jack, you know? Yeah, you're right. You're right. So, yeah, Aubrey and her husband are in the car. And then this is where it kind of shows off to the side. It goes like, oh, we have new neighbors. I hear he has a young girl, which immediately tells you it's the people who we just saw got killed. So, you know that they're in the general vicinity. Yeah, they drive by and they're like, oh, yeah, he uh, left his wife for a, a college student or something. Yeah, and then the husband just goes, hmm. A lot of, like, a lot of, hmm. A lot, there's a lot of brewing just contempt in this family of people. It's it's boiling over. Um, so anyway, they decide to go to their, to their mansion or their home. They're very rich white people, so they have a very nice house. Um, there's going to be a kind of family gathering. I assume it's like, I don't know if it's for Thanksgiving or it's maybe one of those just family reunion type deals. Um, I don't think the movie ever says, but yeah, they're kind of scoping out the house and the wife goes in there and she immediately suspects something's wrong because I think the husband goes to open the door and he's like, huh, it's unlocked. And then she's immediately like, the, the dude is like super chill about it. He's like, oh, silly about that, huh? It's unlocked. Yeah. And the he, wife, he was like, uh, the movers must've just left it open. <laughs> like that's yeah. a thing that happens. The wife, meanwhile, does not believe anything he is saying. He's like immediate red flags, like pop up. I'm like unbelievable. No, what? Don't go in the house. This is dumb. Anyway, it cuts to uh, Aaron and her boyfriend Crispin, and this is where it is a fact of family reunion in a vacation home in Missouri Present. Thank you, Wikipedia, for telling me. Um, they're going over there. I think Aaron is going to be seeing them for the first time. Aaron is from Australia because you can hear it in her accents. And Crispin seems just extremely uncomfortable about going to his parents. 
it kind of feels like he, yeah, he's it's, it's weird because he mentions like his mom is on some kind of medication and he says it in like a very like oh she's really sick kind of way and then it never comes up again yeah i think they kind of do that to make it seem like why doesn't the husband believe her more because later on he goes to check because she hears us uh, she thinks there's someone walking on top of the house and the husband is immediately yeah, she like hears footsteps on the second floor yeah, and then the husband is immediately like, uh-huh, yeah, okay, honey. And she's, like, kind of freaking That's out. That's actually my favorite interaction in the whole movie. Because he's like, well, I'll go look. And she's like, no, don't go look. Leave the house with me. And he's like, nah, nah, it'll be fine. And so he picks up, like, a little club. And he's like, what if I take this with me? Do you feel better? And she just looks at him for a minute and goes, no! <laughs> <laughs> what? No, like, you're not paying no, attention to me. No, of course not. So it's I a little he- club. No, it's a tiny club. I think him mentioning that is kind of what tells you why this guy is just... Just to make him not seem like a complete asshole, just to let you know that like, she's had some problems, so that's why he's not fully believing her. But he does go to check, and when he's checking, uh, it's actually like super quiet, and it looks like he's going to run into one of the dudes. And then right before he's about to check the door, uh, I think the his son actually finally gets home. And yeah, he's like, he's like looking around and, and he bumps into Crispin. And he says not to start immediately off on a bad foot, but why is mom crying outside? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, oh, man. And they all leave. And as they're leaving, that's when it's kind of revealed there was actually someone in the door he was about to check. Um, but before that, they also explained that the parents, his dad worked for a defense company. It was like a super yeah, like, just NATO. A, a, some sort of what do they they call it like KFP or something? Yeah, enough to make it feel like they're ultra conservative or something. He he kind of plays it off of like this is the reason why I don't really want you to meet them is because you know they got their money this way. And I'm oh yeah, he calls of, them fascists. Yeah, fascists. Are you ready to meet my fascist parents? <laughs> but yeah, the mom's crying outside, and they kind of have a quick powwow to make the mom feel better and. Everyone kind of ignores that she heard someone going upstairs, I think. Yeah, they all just brought... It's not the only time, too. They, I'll talk about it later when when we get there. But there are definitely portions of the movie where they should be 100% aware someone is in the house, and they just don't address it. Yeah. One person really knows that there should be someone in the house, and the rest of the people just go... Oh, they're like immediately they're like fucking NPCs in the in the first dead rising, the ones that you have to tell them to go inside the safe house. Like they're that <laughs> level of useless once the action yes, starts going so on. So many of these people are just oh, they're so bad. Yeah, so we meet Crispin's brother next, who immediately has like maybe one of the most like I don't know if it's <laughs> one of the worst brother relationship because he's like calling him fat and he's like watching. Oh UFC yeah, that's fight. uh that's Drake, the douche brother. <laughs> The douche brother, he's like who's, going like... Whose only role is to be a douche. That's all he does, all movie. All he does. But he's like, in, in the beginning, he's being very like, uh, like um, playful with it. But playful in a way that's like, he's clearly not comfortable with it. He's like, he had such a yeah, chubby I, face yeah, they're when like he was a kid. fighting, and the whole time, Crispin's like, stop, stop, stop. And he's like, stop. still doing it. Yeah, and then yeah. He's going, <laughs> he starts going for the face. And he goes like, Yeah, he nope. starts like hitting him in the face. <laughs> he's like, you know I don't like that. Stop. <laughs> And <laughs> so they finally stop. This is also where you get to meet. Um, I think this is another funny scene because I think it's only there to establish that they have like percadins and stuff because uh, the asshole brother goes up. He wants to have sex with his partner or his wife. I'm not 100% sure which one it is. And His wife, I believe. Yeah, and you can tell that these people are shitty because they're immediately talking shit on the new girl, Erin, just because she has, like, an accent. <laughs> She's from Australia. Like, it's the most petty reason to not like someone who's like, oh, that accent, I would just get feel so bored with it. It's like, bitch, what, <laughs> what is this person <laughs> supposed to do? That's yeah, they're, they're all assholes, too. There's, like, not one that you're like, oh, you're kind of cool. Yeah. So he tries to have sex with her, and she's immediately like, no. He's like... Where are the drugs? <laughs> he's just like immediately like <laughs> after no sex. He's like, listen, if I'm not going to have any sex, I may as well get some fucking Vicodin inside me. <laughs> Give me something. 
So yeah, then they meet the others, which is like the younger sister and her boyfriend, which is like a documentary dude. And basically now the whole family's kind of together. And I think during all this, I I don't know if there's like hints that there's maybe something. Um, but it's going off fine. And then they have like a dinner party. And the dinner party is where things start to actually start to go bad because they're like explaining their life. Like the dude who is a documentary, he's just like... Oh, yeah, I'm like a movie maker. And then the asshole brother's like, oh, yeah, what do you do? And he's like, what have you done? He's like, oh, you know, I've done underground film festivals. He's like, oh, why is it under the underground film festival? Is it like, do you see the movies under? Like, the most asshole thing to say is like, do you see it underground? Yeah, yeah. he's like the biggest douche, like, in the whole world. He's, yeah. uh, I don't even understand, like, if they wanted you to even remotely like him. I don't think so. I think this line's pretty funny when he's like, when he tells him, he's like, you know, so because film festivals are supposed to already be indie, so the idea of an underground film festival is already like, oh, okay. So you have like a obscure thing for obscure things. You know where I think the media is going? Commercials. <laughs> I think you should look into. Yeah, he tells them that like, oh, I've seen documentary commercials. You know why not? And it's like you're he's like such an asshole. Not really the same thing. And you know what? This is I can tell that this was written by someone who's had this conversation. Because that is actually something someone would say who does not understand. Like, he's like, oh, you don't need the whole starving artist thing. He's like, we're not starving. He just immediately assumes he's poor. And like, yeah, because he's, cause he's is an artist. Yeah, so he must be, like, poor. Yeah. And so then Crispin talks about how he met with Aaron and how Aaron was once his former student, but they weren't anymore. They were dating when they were, um, when, when, uh... When she was a part of, like, was his, yeah, yeah, like her TA, but then they called it off because they didn't, you know, they they felt kind of weird about it, and then, yeah, his brother under his breath goes like, oh yeah, this is, you know, that's really inappropriate, like in the <laughs> the most asshole this way too. He's like, yeah, super inappropriate, and that sets off Crispin going like, what what would you say? What 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 would I say? What I say is like, no, you said it was inappropriate. No, I was agreeing with you. You're not agreeing with me. You're, you're yeah, they just me. like start screaming, and they have the the argument lasts a really long time. It lasts, like, an, but th- this it's is an a, insane amount of time. Yeah, an insane amount of time because you can tell that immediately this family just does not like each other. Also, I forgot. There's also the last people to enter are the little brother and his lady friend Z. I think it's Z and Tyreek. Yeah, those are the last one to go in there. So everyone's yes, kind of... Yes, Z. That's right. His, yeah, Felix and Z. Yes, there you go. And so they're kind of like... Oh, they're all arguing, but then the documentary guy goes up and he kind of goes... Because he sees something. He's like, what is that? He doesn't say it, but he kind of just gets up and looks. And when he looks... To no, go he see... does say it eventually. He's like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, yeah. he goes, what the fuck is that? And when he gets up, he looks at it. Boom. Perfect. He gets hit in the crossbow square across the face, like right in the middle of the yeah, forehead. Yeah, it's like it's like lodged right in the center of his forehead. And yeah, and while Crispin is still arguing with his brother, saying whatever, at this point they stop arguing because there's a dude with an arrow clearly <laughs> in the back of the head, but one person does not realize it because he's still arguing. And then they turn around, and uh, I believe Declan, who was the one who got got first, immediately falls to the floor. Everyone starts freaking the fuck out, and I think they open fire of arrows into the um, into the place. They yeah, all they get just down. start shooting arrows in. Yeah, I think Aaron is the first one to tell everyone to immediately get down. She tells them all like, "Go yeah, here, she's go our, here." She's our trademark, uh, actually capable human in this movie. Yes. She's the only one. She's the only one who's capable in this. She's super capable. Um, they try to do... <laughs> I think it's a really... Uh, no, the other brother gets hit in the back of the... Because he goes to go protect his mom. Yeah, he gets yeah, hit the in the douche. back. He goes to get his and mom down. And the funniest down. thing is... So he gets hit in the back by an arrow. And everyone's freaking out. And he's like laying on the ground grabbing his, the, his wound. And they're like, we don't have any cell phone service. What's going on? And the the weird like Felix techie brother is like, I think they might have a cell phone jammer. I mean, they're illegal, but you can definitely get them. And the douche brother who is laying on the ground with an arrow wound is like, yeah, you would be into that weird shit, you weirdo. <laughs> Fucking like, weirdo. You just got shot. 
the, the great thing is, like, you could buy it for, like, 30 bucks on the internet. It's like, you wouldn't know, you fucking weirdo. Place. Yeah, and it's like, you're, why are you still being a douche? You have an arrow in your back. He's just so angry. He's like, I don't, I listen, I got an arrow in my back, and I really don't want to fucking hear from you and your weird illegal shit going on right now. <laughs> so everyone's freaking out. The sister who was with the, the man who got shot, she's crying, inconsolable. But it's okay because Aaron has a plan for them to escape. Basically, they're going to grab a chair and then run forward so that if anything were to get everyone were to get shot, everything would be perfectly fine um, because the, the, the chair would absorb the blow. Everyone is able to get across. The only one they end up shooting is Aaron. Um, and when they shoot Aaron, her plan worked out where they shot the, the chair. and Yeah, she was the, the chair somehow catches it. Yeah. So now they're in the lobby... And this is amazing. This is there's another argument now because now they're arguing. I think this is actually the greatest line in the entire movie because now they're all kind of arguing about who they, they want to escape. Aaron's the only one who says no. We need to stay here and hold up. And everyone's like, no. We should try running. We should try going somewhere. And the the little sister who is also inconceivable. The two brothers start fighting, and then then, then Crispin goes like. I can run. I'm because I'm the fastest. Like you're not the fast. I'm the fastest, but I got a fucking arrow in my back. He's like, no, nah, man. I'm I'm the fast. He's like, you're not fast. You're fat. You fat fuck. He's like, I'm not fucking fat. Do it. I'm not fucking fat. <laughs> and then he has like an argument over why he's not fat. Real quick. He's so insecure <laughs> about being called fat that he takes time off to just be like, fuck you. I'm not fat. And then. <laughs> The sister who's inconsolable at this point, she feels like this is her time to tell everyone, no one believes I can do anything. I'm the fastest. I'm yeah, so she's fast. like, her her boyfriend or whatever just took a crossbow bolt to the face. Yeah. And she goes, no one believes in me. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, we believe in you, honey. We, we, we You can do it. So what, we're, what the, the plan is now, she's going to start running full force. They say... No one, none of the people out there would expect her to be running fucking full force outside. So what they're going to do is open the door at the last minute and she's going to run out. And they're like, okay. So in slow motion, she starts like fucking doing the marathon run, running for the door. They open the door. She runs, immediately hits tripwire right in the neck and gets fucking killed. Yeah. It's, and it, the best part is they do it in like slow-mo. They're like. Like exciting, like uh, Rocky slow mo. <laughs> like, yeah. And I think and they she also... starts running and they open the door and she just immediately hits it and it cuts her throat. Yeah, and then I think they also add the boing found for when the wire goes up and down. <laughs> and so she's got, got, we've got two people down, the useless sister who ran, no one bothered to check to see if there was any wire, but now that they know wire's there. Funny enough, they know wire's there, no one decides to actually do anything about it. Eventually, they cut it down, but they do. not until way later. Not not until it's enough time for the, the character with the arrow on his back to accidentally hit the arrow on the wire, and he just fucking goes down again. Yeah, well, no. He he hits the arrow. They left it in, because obviously you're not you're supposed to do that. And he hit his little, like, his back wound on it, and he goes, ah! And so he grabs it and rips it out, and then immediately passes out from blood loss. Yeah. So before that, they also ask him, do you want me to just get rid of the arrow? And he's like, no, it's fine. Just keep it in there. And then it immediately backfires on him later. But before that happens, Aaron decides to like start locking up all the windows. Everyone start doing things. Uh, everyone is basically useless. Aaron's the only one who's trying anything. When she's in the kitchen, the lamb mask attacks. And she immediately like fucking stabs him in the hand. And this isn't like a Michael Myers situation where they're like near inkillable machines. He gets stabbed in the hand and you immediately hear <laughs> the one from the guy. He... Oh yeah, no, that dude is like screaming his fucking head off. Like he, he's in a lot of pain. <laughs> he's a lot of pain from this. And so they decide that now the wife is just completely Aubrey, completely just like inconsolable. She's seen one, one, her daughter die. She's on another one die. So like, okay, let's put her to bed and then she'll be perfectly fine. Completely forgetting the fact that she heard that there was someone upstairs. Yeah. And which you think that after you get attacked with a crossbow, you'd be like, oh my God, maybe she was right. Maybe someone's upstairs. 
And they think, no. It turns out they still thought that she was wrong about that. He was hiding under the bed. He comes from under the bed with a fucking machete. Kills her and then finds enough time to put your next in blood on the wall. He, this on man works wall. fucking yep. fast. <laughs> he works... He kills fast and then he fucking paints with a amazing ability. Um, I think they all kind of like leave because now they're like, we don't want to see my mom like this. We can't see it. So they put a tape over her. Kelly stays behind. She's the one who's with Declan. And that's when Fox Max turns out he's still there. She immediately fucking runs out of the house, doesn't bother telling anyone else that he's still up there. She just immediately starts running, gunning. She goes to the dude who died in the beginning's house. And that's when she they're like playing a loud ass fucking song. I don't remember what song it was, but they're just playing it really loud. And it's very clearly like they they propped up his dead body. There's a whole reason they did this is so that they would think that someone was there. But no one was there. Earlier on in the movie, someone went to go ask for milk. But that same oh, that was Aaron. Was really, yeah. yeah, Aaron was there. So mm-hmm. it was basically a trap for one of this. Kelly gets immediately killed. She gets, like, fucking put through the glass window, right? He just, like, shoves her through it. And that's what kills her? Uh, no. Oh, he shoves her through the glass door. And then he choke slams her through a table. And then he golf hits her in the head with an axe. That's right. And then he just kind of sits down to appreciate the music for a little bit. Yeah, he just like takes in the moment for a little. <laughs> As you do after a sick kill. As one does, yeah. Exactly. Um, and at this point, Crispin says like, you know what, fuck it. I'm also going to leave and see if I can get some help from this. Uh, I think I'll be perfectly fine. And nothing bad will happen. I think before he does that, he goes to check for if they could use one of the cars. It turns out all the cars aren't working, is what he says. So then he just decides to leave. And he leaves the house. And uh, I think, I don't remember if it's this point at all. I want to say it's a little bit later in the movie, but Crispin doesn't show up. And I think it's Z who tries to console. He's like, I'm sure Crispin's okay. And she goes like... Thanks, but he's he's not. He's he's very weak. Oh, you know, it's it's Felix. She's like, he's like, hey, Chris was gonna be all right. You know, he he's a tough guy. And she goes, he's not. But thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he's not. She just immediately knows. <laughs> um, the husband Paul goes to check the 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 room he was going to check beforehand to see if there's anyone in there. Finds that someone has been sleeping. Um, saying basically, there's killers in the house. Uh, they've known for a while, and I think he goes to tell Felix, and Felix and Z are next to him, and he goes to tell Felix, this isn't, like, a random attack, they've been planning it for a while, and then Fox Mask shows up out of nowhere, fucking slits his throat, gets killed, and then that's when Felix and Z are revealed to be a part of the plot, and Felix is kind of like, he goes to the Fox Mask and goes, dude, right in front of me? You couldn't have waited? <laughs> Yeah, he's there like, you had to do that right there. <laughs> you had to, like, right in front of him. And then the dude is like, this, I think this is a nice touch. He takes off his earbuds and goes, what? And <laughs> then he goes like, get the hell out of here. Just go. <laughs> um, they reveal the reason that they're doing this is that they want the family inheritance because the family has a lot of money. Yeah, um, they got Mondo Cash. Yes. So before this, Tiger Mask goes to attack Aaron, and this is an amazing scene because I think he's he's going through the window, and in one fell swoop, she fucking hits him in the head with an axe and just immediately starts beating him with a meat tenderizer to the back of the head. She like oh yeah, she fucks him up. She fucks him up like hardcore set she's just like going it's going it goes on for a little too long it goes on to the point where i think the people who are watching are like because at this point crispin's gone and so she's just her by herself and she just fucking has had it with these bastards all the people they've killed she just beats them up with a hit me tenderizer she leaves them there and then the lamb mask goes in she finds he finds the tiger mask's uh corpse immediately starts freaking out has an emotional breakdown he flips a table which lets everyone know that he's in the room um it turns out that they were brothers and he's the one who confronts felix and says like you (laughs) another great line in the movie says you may not have liked your brother but that was my fucking brother and i loved him yeah he was like unlike you i liked my brother (laughs) he's like that was my brother and unlike you i love my brother (laughs) love my family um 
it was uh, pretty great. And then he's like, basically tells him like, okay, if we just keep doing this, everything will be fine. Everyone will get their money. Uh, cause I'll give you more money and I'll, I won't be able to do it right away, but everything will be fine. Everything will be cool. And I think at this point, Aaron, who had been trying to, she basically says like, if you just text 911, like even if it's on offline, it'll actually send, which is maybe the most like, like, oh, it will. (laughs) I had no idea like something like this would actually happen. And, um, just to show how unbelievably prepared for this she is. I think later on, I don't remember if it's this scene. I, I think by this point, while they're having the brother conversation, it's a little bit too far gone. But let me see where I am at at this point. The people who are currently alive that we know are confirmed are Declan, uh, Felix, Z, Aaron, and I think that's basically it. Who's Declan? I don't remember anyone named Declan. Is his name not Declan? What? The Which asshole character? brother. Asshole brother. The one who's uh, the, the douche brother that got shot? Yes. That's Drake. My bad, Drake. Why am I calling him Declan? I don't know. That's a sufficiently douchey name. It is. Um. Okay, so yeah. Um, Aaron ends up stabbing the... Uh, the lamb guy, and he ends up kind of escaping. At this point, she has a conversation with Z as they're kind of setting up a nail trap. And he, she explains to Z that her dad thought that the end of the world was coming because we were going to run out of resources. So they decided to go. He took his family to the outback on Australia, and he found a bunch of friends, and they basically made a survival compound. And she basically trained in Australia until she was 14 when her mom said, all right, I'm leaving your father now. And she was kind of happy for that. But up until that point, she's basically had crazy survivor training. So that's why she's as insane as she is. Which really puts into question, what the hell was she doing on Australia for 14 years to get her this savage? Yeah, like she she said she left when she was like a kid, mostly. And <laughs> she's like fucking people up. She's like, yeah. So she's she's not that survivalist and she's got that in her. Um... Yeah, so at this point, Drake wakes up and they kind of go into the basement. Drake's in the basement. They're trying to figure out something. And then that's when Felix tells him that the, the friend, the lady friend she was with is dead because they threw her body against the window as like a way to go in. And then his brother starts stabbing him because he's he puts on some gloves and he starts killing his brother. Because at this point, he's been taking so much damage and he just keeps putting stuff in his brother's like body. He's like... It, this is very inconsiderate of you. Can you please die? Do you know how hard it is? Yeah, yeah, but that's what yeah, that's what he said. He said, uh, "This is already hard enough for me. Can you please just die?" <laughs> so now he's dead, and that's when they have the conversation with um, the the mass care guys. It's like we just need to take care of one more person, and that's it. Um, I forget who which one of them activates the floorboard, but one of them totally activates the floorboard trap, which was a it's the same trap with like nails, where um oh that was the sheep, that was the sheep yeah so basically the trap is is that she set up two plywoods of nails, one where it's very clearly visible for one person and one that's at the far reach of it so basically the person who would see like where the nails were they would basically just like step down and where they thought was safe and that's actually where the nail trap was. And he totally mm-hmm. gets put through the nail. And I think that's what ends up causing the conversation where he starts arguing at him. Because at this point, it's causing way more effort and pain than was necessary at this point. Because he didn't expect any of that. So when they're having that conversation, the fact the text for 911 finally goes off. And they now 100% know where she is. Uh, they think they're going to get her. And it doesn't work out because <laughs> she immediately fucking schools them the second they try anything against her. Um... Yeah, they, they like, the one guy's like, I got her. And he goes and walks over and opens the curtain she's behind, and she immediately, like, palm checks him in the throat. Yes, and I think she ends up stabbing him in the head as well. And that's basically the end of this guy. Um, before uh, no, this, that's I, later. That's oh. after the, that's, she stabs the guy in the head after she runs away, and she, like, flips out of the, uh, of the thing that's... that they're in. And she, so she runs out of the house. And she flips off the... She's like, actually, no. We skipped the part where she leaps out of the second story of the oh, house. I forgot. That scene's so good, too. Because she's like, she's basically cornered. She looks at him. She fucking jumps out the window. 
Yeah, she chucks her meat tenderizer at him and just full-on leaps through the glass of the second-story window. Lands, she has a little glass in her tummy, but she takes it out, it's fine. She immediately sees the crossbow guy. Yeah, and that's how she ends up back in the house, and she's hiding in a space, and then that conversation, then that uh, scene happens right there. Yeah, that's that's um, when it reveals, that's when she learns that the brother was in on it, and his girlfriend. Yeah. And, and so she this, runs out, and then kind of does like a little trick where she leaps out and then turns around and immediately goes back in the window back into the house yes okay man there's another scene that i forgot to mention but i want to mention just because i think it's really funny another another kind of sex scene where z wants to felix is feeling really bad about the whole family murder thing and z wants to cheer him up by having sex and he's like i'm i'm really not in the mood can you can you read the room i'm not really into it and she's like you never want to have anything you never want to do anything fun or adventurous have sex with me on top of your mother's corpse yeah goes, she's like uh you never want to you know you never want to try anything exciting and he's like that's not i don't think that's fair criticism of me and she's like okay then fuck me next to your dead mom and he just leaves <laughs> that's yeah, what he's he like up and walks out. not humoring the situation at all and he leaves and um and then she takes the ring that the mom had just because she's an asshole <laughs> Just the, if it's yeah, that's just, no, I think the whole point of that scene was just she sucks. She really does suck. Um, okay, let's see. So, yeah, stabbing in the head. She cannot outrun Fox Mask with a wounded leg because, again, she jumped out the window. Uh, she sets up a trap on the front door where an axe would fall on anyone that would get, 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 get anyone who opens the door is basically getting an axe to the head. Um, but the fox mask dude ends up going for the window. She lures him to the basement where she blinds him with some like camera, like the camera's going crazy. And then she fucking bashes his head in with a log and kills him. So now all she needs to really deal with is Z and Felix. They kind of like double team her, but they're both unbelievably fucking useless against her. She's able to immediately outpower them. And she puts, she hits Felix with a blender. She puts the blender on top of Felix's head and turns it on, killing him. Yeah, she also, she takes the time to plug it in, which I think is the funniest part. Yeah, she plugs it in and then... And then now it's just Z. And Z, without missing a beat, she takes the, 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 I think a kitchen knife. Boom, right on the top of Z's head. Well, the best part is, she it's a pocket knife, and she pulls it out of her back because Felix had stabbed her in the back with it. Yes. And, and she pulls the pocket knife out of her own back and does like a little twirl to spin it around in her fingers, and then she stabs Z in the top of the head with it. Yeah, and then basically everyone in the house is dead. Everyone is dead. She sits down. Felix had turned off the... Um, her his thirty dollar Google thing, the phone his jammer. His cell phone jammer. And then she hears the call. She opens it. She's kind of like surprised at the number who's calling her. And then her turns out Crispin was involved in all of it. He immediately decided to bail out because he didn't want to see anyone die. And he basically gives like a lot of excuses. And he's like, he's like, Felix, are you not gonna say anything? And he just decides to go inside the house because he assumes everything's fine. He goes in, notices that basically everyone is dead. <laughs> Everything is way worse from what he left it, including the people that they had hired. And then he sees her, and then he acts as if nothing. He's like, oh my god, babe, you're fine. And then she drops the phone, <laughs> and then he immediately goes into like a soliloquy about like, um, you know, I was supposed to save you. He's like, no, you weren't. He's like, no, he's like, no, no, you don't listen. You were supposed to be the final survivor. We were going to plan it out this way, where you were going to be the last one, and you were going to be basically the witness, and I was going to use this, and, you know, we could use this money. We don't have any money. You know, we could use this money to pay off your student loans, because you got a lot of them. I know you do. Um, and he's basically, like, giving this entire spiel. He's like, well, here's the two things that can happen here. One thing is that... Um, you can agree with me and we can take the money and everything will be fine or you can send me to jail those are the two options and she basically he, he i think he goes on for like five minutes and it's, it's really a long conversation and he's like come on I, you, I said i'd come back and i i did i'm right here for you i love you and she's fucking not having it yeah she waits for him to finish knifes him in the fucking neck immediately she knifes him in the neck and then pulls it out and he goes why and she goes why the fuck not 
and then bang, you hear a shot as the police go in right when she's <laughs> killed. <laughs> well, don't forget, she also stabs him in the eye first. Oh, that's right. She stabs him in the fucking eye. <laughs> and, and then, then the cop gets... shoots her in the shoulder. And then he's like, basically, I need backup. Go to this location. He goes to the front door and she goes, no way, don't. And then he gets <laughs> the cop opens the door, gets an axe to the head and is immediately taken out. Yeah, he and gets then, the, uh, the Home Alone trap that she had left behind. And then big credit that says, you're next. And then a cool credit sequence where it's basically showing the aftermath. Um, they show up her name. It's like the actress who played her. And then like there's a photo because she's at the police station. And then there's like in question marks, suspect. <laughs> like <laughs> she's the only survivor. It doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> and they show basically like the crime scene photos of everyone else in the house of all the mass dudes and... That is the end of the movie, and that is your next. So, yeah, this movie is, uh, crazy. It's, 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 it's fucking insane. It is insane. <laughs> it's unbelievably insane. Uh, the win, I first saw it, I think it's a really good, like, um, like most slasher movies, basically every character is useless, including the main character. The only reason that they survive is they got really lucky. <laughs> basically or the main villain wanted to save them for last that's the only reason they survive and this one Aaron's like extremely competent in everything she does even when she's about to like leave with the um the chair she makes sure to pick up a weapon like there's a lot of like good subtle things that she does that's like that helps her show that she's actually the only one that's taking this extremely serious like anytime there's a chance for her to get a weapon she does she immediately goes for locking the door she tries to like board up everything she has like the best ideas she's the only one that says like they're just using crossbows like if we just stay here we'll be fine and we'll have the advantage nobody listens to her absolutely no one listens to what yeah, she has zero to say people will take her seriously until like half of the group is dead yeah and it's pretty great. I like the kind of setups that they do throughout, like the dad almost going through the door and then the dad having immediate regret when he goes to check the door and he realizes, like, if I had actually just taken that seriously, then maybe my wife wouldn't have died. <laughs> like, everything would have been fine. Um, but I didn't take it. But, yeah, there's a lot of good setup of everything else. Like, the way certain characters act feel, like, weird. Like, even when, even before all the things that are going bad, you can't, you don't know if it's because the characters are just freaking out or that they're actually evil. Except for Z. I think immediately Z seems like the most untrustworthy person in the house. <laughs> yeah, Z, Z sucks. Yeah, She's Z sucks. Uh, Felix is kind of the same way. He's equally useless. Like when um, Aaron is fighting off someone, they actively just watch her fight and they don't help her. And then when she's able to kill him with the meat cleaver, she says, thanks for the assist. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, thanks. He's like, oh, you you had it. You had it. And then they reveal <laughs> later on it's because... It's not because they're useless. It's because they're actually a part of it. Um, well, so it, they reveal that they're a part of it, but then it is also because they're useless. Because they fight her at the same time and they can't win. They cannot win at all, even with the stabbing of it. Like, everything that she's going through at this point, she's, like, barely able to walk. She's hobbling. Still not enough to take her down. <laughs> Just unbelievably powerful. And because a lot of these characters are assholes, you don't feel too bad about the way they die. The characters that are the most, like, like I think the people you feel most bad for are Aaron and the sheep brother. <laughs> the one who actually felt an emotion when his brother died. Oh, yeah. The, the, the only person who gave a shit. Yeah. Basically, and everyone else is kind of just, like, immoral assholes, which makes it a lot more fun to kind of see them go down. I think the mom's also kind of sympathetic in some cases, but you actually don't see her enough. She's sympathetic in the case of, like, oh, she's got some mental problems and it doesn't seem like the family really believes in her and stuff like that and i guess the sister who immediately starts having a breakdown <laughs> when she goes for yeah running. she just freaks out immediately yeah um but yeah i i really like this movie i think it's a fun play on the idea of like everyone likes to have that idea of like what what if i was in this situation i would do this i would do that and this is actually a character who does it they actually found yeah. the one character <laughs> who could survive the only this. character who actually would do anything <laughs> Yes. It's a very, like, I don't know if it's uh, there's enough movies in to, for it to be considered a genre, but it's kind of like the genre I see of 
the one woman who has to basically survive it, like she's an extremely competent woman that just has to survive and not survive a night i think it's this movie and shit the one where it's like a bunch of white people hunting a new new bride that i can't remember the name of the movie but that one's also equally as fun <laughs> Bunch uh, of white people hunting. Yeah, I want to. I want to say it's you're invited. It fucking. Uh, the problem is, is that the actress in it looks a lot like Margot Robbie to the point where I don't remember her name because me and my siblings have been calling her the, uh, <laughs> the dollar store version of Margot Robbie, the <laughs> the one dollar version. <laughs> she looks a lot like her, but we can't actually remember. Uh, but yeah, that's how I feel. How do you feel, Zen? Your first time. Uh, it was it was a good movie. It was fucking insane. Uh, beyond all reason, it was really fun though. Um, uh, I I like like you said, every character was pretty much irredeemable. Like they're just the worst, awful people. Um, which made it more entertaining to watch them get obliterated. Uh, <laughs> I liked uh, I liked Aaron. She was cool. She was doing a bunch of fucking judo moves taking these dudes out and uh i really 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 like the ending where he's just in there and he's like uh, the the or, uh, crispin when crispin is just in there and he's like so where's uh felix and she's like i smashed a fucking blender on his head and i killed him and he goes oh okay <laughs> uh where's z and she's like killed her too and he goes Oh, okay. And then doesn't he blame her? He's, yeah, he's like, like, isn't that kind of weird? This would have gone great if you weren't uh, incredibly good at killing people, which is kind of weird, by the way. Weird thing to not mention to me, huh? Never brought it up. Like he's very much like the worst boyfriend possible. I think when someone's he's a huge asshole. I think when you actually look at what um, I think I think it's great because this family represents one. Um, the one side of the extremely like terrible like rich white people and then he's the other side of the terrible which thinks he's not as bad but is equally bad in a different way <laughs> like, yeah the one where he's thinks, like thinks he's better than they are and he's absolutely not at all no not at all he's the same level he just doesn't he just thinks he's better than them because he thinks in a certain way he's like one of those dudes that pretends to be um, very helpful to a certain cause and then the second they get found out they're like all right here i am in my white businessman suit let me put away my purple hair i don't belong to this <laughs> subculture anymore i've that's been found exactly out. right yeah. uh but yeah that that final scene where he's talking to her it's really amazing because you're just like you have a feeling that she might let him go she because she is really devastated by this reveal she's just like come on like no not like this but she doesn't really say it. It just all emotes from her face. But then when she gets them, it's just amazing and it's cathartic. <laughs> it's great. Well, yeah, because the whole time he's like, uh, "No, no, we, they weren't gonna hurt you." And she was like, "You would have. You were willing to risk me getting killed." And he was like, "Nah, come on." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah such, an asshole. such an unbelievable prick so unbelievable and he already kind of you already kind of don't feel good about him in general but yeah the you're next it's great it's amazing that this man made this movie it's fantastic i think he wrote it directed it and did oh no he didn't write it he was just a director for it he was an editor in it though and he composed some of the music she has this amazing theme too whenever she's killing and they play the theme when she shoots, when she stabs him as well. They play like this, do do da da da, like like her, like I think it's borderline the Doom Slayer, but with more techno. She has a pro murder. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it's really amazing, and yeah, I think that's basically it. It's very rare for you just to kind of see like a slasher film that's just very good at what it does and doesn't really need a sequel of anything because there's just no way to do a sequel to this unless this woman oh yeah just... you can possibly no it's just a slasher movie one off you're done you're good you're next we don't even really know why the movie's called you're next other than they leave a giant mark that says you're next yeah that's literally the only reason it kind of feels but like those old... funny. it reminds me of the old uh, edgar wright um fake movie trailer for his 
fake British horror movie called Don't, where it's just like, don't go into the house. Don't open the cupboard. Don't open that door. Don't watch this movie. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> The name of the, the movie is just meant to be, invoke a feeling and not actually have anything to really do with anything. That's amazing. Yeah, it's solid film, especially for a spooky time. So I would recommend it if you got time to watch a horror movie. This is the final day of Halloween. So if you want to just quickly put something on, this is definitely enjoyable all the way through. And like I said, it's a little slow in the beginning. But once it starts getting off, it goes pretty nuts. Mm-hmm. And it's not a super long movie. So it's it's only like an hour and a half. So it's not a crazy time investment or anything. Yeah. I would say, unless you're doing an insanely amazing horror movie... You only need about 90 minutes to tell your horror movie <laughs> anymore, mm-hmm. and you're pushing what people will, will accept. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, no one wants to see a two hour, 30 minute version of Friday the 13th. <laughs> no, no, that's plenty. <laughs> so, 90 minutes, you're good. So, yeah, that's the end of the concession stand. So, I don't know if we're going to come back for December. If we do, we will gladly find a. Um, Christmas movie that we can see. It has to be one of them. <laughs> there's so oh, there's many out there. I'm sure. <laughs> so, until next time, I believe the send off for this is always remember to support your local concession stand. In this case, you can leave a like on this. Appreciate it a whole bunch. Enjoy your spooky times, and thank you very much for joining us here and for also enjoying the 13 nights of Halloween. So, while we have say a nice goodbye, Halloween, everybody. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Or just go to the Yu-Gi-Oh! and you'll immediately see us there together. Yeah, (laughs) we're always doing that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Bye-bye.